we will be discussing about Lemke's paralysis. So in this video we will be discussing about the site of injury in Lemke's paralysis, the cause of injury in Lemke's paralysis, the nerve roots which are involved, the muscles paralyzed and the deformity. So let's discuss about the site of injury in Lemke's paralysis. We know that the lower thrombobrachial plexus is formed from the ventral ramae of the C8 and T1 spinal nerve. So this is the lower trunk. This lower thrombobrachial plexus is the site of injury in Trumke's paralysis. So mainly the T1 fibers are affected but partly C8 are also affected. So this is mainly involved and there will be partial involvement of C8. So that's all about the site of injury. Now the causes of injury in Lemke's paralysis. So this occurs due to undue abduction of the arm this can occur when you clutch uh, some objects with your hand when you fall from height clutching objects with hand during a fall from height. It can also occur as a birth injury also. And Lemke's paralysis can also occur if you have a tumor on the apex of the lung, that is the pancreas tumor. Now, next section is the now roots involved. Which are the nerve roots involved? Mainly T1. Partly C8. Now let's see the muscles which are affected. So as the T1 fibers are affected, the fibers passing from the T1 root to the median nerve and the ulnar nerve are affected. So as the, some fibers of median nerve as well as ulnar nerve are affected, all the intrinsic muscles of the hand are paralyzed. So intrinsic muscles are paralyzed. Intrinsic muscles of hand. These are the lumbicals and the indrosi. And as the C8 root is affected, the ulnar flexors of the wrist and fingers are affected. Let's discuss about the deformity. We know that the intrinsic muscles of the hand normally 
it will cause flexion at the metacarbophalangeal joint. In Klumke's, this is a normal case. In Klumke's paralysis, the intrinsic muscles of the hand are paralyzed. So there is loss of flexion at MCP joint. But we know that the extensors of the fingers and the flex long flexors of the fingers are intact. So the extensors of the fingers will cause extension at MCP joint. And the long flexors of the fingers will cause flexion at interphalangeal joint. So the loss of flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint will cause extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint because of the action of the extensors of the fingers. So extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint. So because of the intact long flexors of fingers, there will be flexion at the interphalangeal joint. So, extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint along with the flexion at the interphalangeal joint causes a deformity which is known as complete claw hand deformity. So, all this results in a deformity which is called complete claw hand. And because of the paralysis of ulnar flexor uterus, there will be wrist extension also. So these are the two deformities in Klemke's paralysis. Along with this, there will be sensory impairment. So sensory means over a small area on the medial aspect of forearm and hand. So along with this, there will be sympathetic changes if the T1 is injured proximal to its white ramus communication to the T1 sympathetic ganglia. So if the T1 injury occurs proximal to its white ramus communication to the T1 sympathetic ganglia, there will be Horner syndrome. means the sympathetic to the head and neck are affected. So it will result in ptosis, meiosis, anhydrosis, pain of thalamus, and loss of sinusoidal reflex. Along with this, there will be some other changes. Because of the paralysis of the muscle, there will be atrophic changes on the pulp of the fingers and also the nails.
because of loss of sympathetic tone the, the, because of arterial and dilatation the region with the sensory loss will appear warmer and because of the loss of sweating it will appear drier also so these are the features of clumpiest paralysis to see more videos from our channel please subscribe our channel thank you